Dodge. Dodge is an American brand of automobile manufactured by FCA US LLC, based in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Dodge vehicles currently include the lower price badge variants of Chrysler badged vehicles as well as performance cars, though for much of its existence Dodge was Chrysler's mid-priced brand above Plymouth. Founded as the Dodge Brothers Company machine shop by brothers Horace Elgin Dodge and John Francis Dodge in the early 1900s, Dodge was originally a supplier of parts and assemblies for Detroit-based automakers and began building complete automobiles under the Dodge Brothers brand in 1914, predating the founding of Chrysler Corporation. The factory was located in Hamtramck, Michigan, and was called the Dodge Main Factory from 1910 until its closing in January 1980. The Dodge Brothers both died in 1920, and the company was sold by their families to Dillon. Reed and Company died in 1925 before being sold to Chrysler in 1928. Dodge vehicles mainly consisted of trucks and full-sized passenger cars through the 1970s, though it made memorable compact cars and mid-size cars. The 1973 oil crisis and its subsequent impact on the American automobile industry led Chrysler to develop the K platform of compact to mid-size cars for the 1981 model year. The K platform and its derivatives are credited with reviving Chrysler's business in the 1980s. One such derivative became the Dodge Caravan. The Dodge brand has withstood the multiple ownership changes at Chrysler from 1998 to 2009, including its short lived merger with Daimler Benz AG from 1998 to 2007, its subsequent sale to Cerberus Capital Management, its 2009 bailout by the United States government and its subsequent Chapter 11 bankruptcy and acquisition by Fiat. In 2011, Dodge, Ram, and Dodge's Viper were separated. Dodge said that the Dodge Viper would be an SRT product and Ram will be a manufacturer. In 2014, SRT was merged back into Dodge. Later that year, Chrysler Group was renamed FCA US LLC, corresponding with the merger of Fiat SPA and Chrysler Group into the single corporate structure of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. Horace and John Dodge founded the Dodge Brothers Company in Detroit in 1900, and quickly found work manufacturing precision engine and chassis components for the city's growing number of automobile firms. Chief among these customers were the established Olds Motor Vehicle Company and the new Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford selected the Dodge Brothers to supply a wide range of components for his original Model A that included the complete chassis, thus Ford needed to add only the body and wheels to finish the cars. The first machine shop where the brothers worked as parts suppliers for Olds and Ford was located at the Boydell Building on Bobian Street at Lafayette. This location was replaced by a larger facility at Hastings Street and Monroe Avenue, which is now a parking garage for the Greek Town Casino Hotel. By 1910, the Dodge Main Factory was built in Hamtramck, where it remained until 1979. The Dodge Brothers Motor Company was established in 1913, and by 1914, John and Horace designed and debuted the first car of their own, the four-cylinder Dodge Model 3035 Touring Car. Marketed as a slightly more upscale competitor to the ubiquitous Ford Model T, it pioneered or made standard many features later taken for granted like all steel body construction as the vast majority of cars worldwide still used wood framing under steel panels, 12-volt electrical system, 35-horsepower engines versus the Model T's 20-horsepower, and sliding gear transmission. Once the Dodge brothers produced their own car, John Dodge was once quoted as saying, Someday, people who own a Ford are going to want an automobile. As a result of this, and the brothers well earned a reputation for the highest quality truck, transmission and motor parts they made for other successful vehicles, Dodge brothers cars were ranked at second place for U.S. sales as early as 1916. That same year, Henry Ford decided to stop paying stock dividends to finance the construction of his new River Rouge complex and the Dodges filed a suite to protect their annual stock earnings of approximately $1 million, leading Ford to buy out his shareholders. The Dodges were paid some $25 million U.S. dollars. Also in 1916, the Dodge Brothers' vehicles won acclaim for their durability in military service. First with the U.S. Army's Pancho Villa Expedition, during the 1910s U.S.-Mexico Border War, the U.S. military's first operation to use truck convoys. General Blackjack Pershing procured a fleet of 150 to 250 Dodge Brothers vehicles for the Mexico campaign. 
Touring cars were used as staff and reconnaissance vehicles. Pershing himself used a Dodge touring car to keep abreast of army columns and control their movements. Br. One notable instance was in May when the 6th Infantry received a reported sighting of Julio Cardenas, one of Villa's most trusted subordinates. Lieutenant George S. Patton led 10 soldiers and two civilian guides in three Dodge Model 30 touring cars to conduct America's first motorized military raid at a ranch house in San Miguelito, Sonora. During the ensuing firefight the party killed three men, of whom one was identified as Cardenas. Patton's men tied the bodies to the hoods of the Dodges, returning to headquarters in Dublin and an excited reception from U.S. newspapermen. Subsequently, some 12,800 Dodge cars and light trucks were used in World War I, over 8,000 touring cars, as well as 2,600 commercial vehicles, such as screenside trucks and panel vans, serving primarily as ambulances and repair trucks. Dutch remained the United States military's primary supplier of light-wheeled vehicles, until the U.S. joined the Second World War. Dutch Brothers' cars continued to rank second place in American sales in 1920. However, the same year, tragedy struck as John Dutch was felled by pneumonia in January. His brother Horace then died of cirrhosis in December of the same year. With the loss of both founders, the Dodge Brothers Company passed into the hands of the brothers' widows, who promoted longtime employee Frederick Haynes to the company presidency. During this time, the Model 30 was evolved to become the new Series 116. However, throughout the 1920s Dodge gradually lost its ranking as the third best-selling automobile manufacturer, slipping down to seventh in the U.S. market. Dodge Brothers emerged as a leading builder of light trucks. They also entered into an agreement whereby they marketed trucks built by Graham Brothers off Evansville, Indiana. The three Graham Brothers would later produce Graham Page and Graham Automobiles. Stagnation in development was becoming apparent, however, and the public responded by dropping Dodge Brothers to fifth place in the industry by 1925. That year, the Dodge Brothers company was sold by the widows to the well known investment group Dillon, Reed and Company. For no less than 146 million U.S. dollars. Dillon, Reed and Company offered non-voting stock on the market in the new Dodge Brothers Incorporated firm, and along with the sale of bonds was able to raise $160 million, reaping a $14 million profit. All voting stock was retained by Dillon, Reed. Frederick Haynes remained as company head until for example Wilmer was named board chairman in November, 1926. Wilmer was a banker with no auto experience and Haynes remained as president. Changes to the car save for superficial things like trim levels and colors, remained minimal until 1927, when the new senior six-cylinder line was introduced. The former four-cylinder line was kept on, but renamed the Fast 4 line until it was dropped in favor of two lighter six-cylinder models for 1928. On October 1, 1925, Dodge Brothers Incorporated acquired a 51% interest in Graham Brothers Incorporated for $13 million and the remaining 49% on May 1, 1926. The three Graham brothers, Robert, Joseph, and Ray, assumed management positions in Dodge Brothers before departing early in 1927. Despite all this, Dodge Brothers sales had already dropped to seventh place in the industry by 1927, and Dylan, Reed began looking for someone to take over the company on a more permanent basis. Eventually Dodge was sold to the new Chrysler Corporation in 1928. To fit better in the Chrysler Corporation lineup, alongside low-priced Plymouth and medium-priced DeSoto, Dodge's lineup for early 1930 was trimmed down to a core group of two lines and 13 models. Prices started out just above DeSoto but were somewhat less than top-of-the-line Chrysler, in a small-scale recreation of General Motors' step-up marketing concept. As Plymouth cars were sold at Chrysler dealerships, Dodge branded vehicles were sold as a lower cost alternative to DeSoto. For 1930, Dodge took another step up by adding a new eight cylinder line to replace the existing senior six cylinder. This basic format of a dual line with six and eight models continued through 1933, and the cars were gradually streamlined and lengthened in step with prevailing trends of the day. The Dodge 8 was replaced by a larger Dodge Deluxe 6 for 1934 which was dropped for 1935. A long wheelbase edition of the remaining six was added for 1936 and would remain a part of the lineup for many years. To enhance production, in 1932 Chrysler built a factory in Los Angeles, California where Chrysler, DeSoto, Dodge and Plymouth vehicles were built until the factory closed in 1971. The Dodge line, 
along with most of the corporation's output, was restyled in the so-called wind stream look for 1935. This was a mild form of streamlining, which saw sales jump remarkably over the previous year. Dodge never got the radical airflow styling that was the cause of depressed sales of Chrysler's and DeSoto's from 1934 to 1937, as a passenger sedan, but it was used on commercial truck for a short time. Dodge added safety features such as a smooth, flat dashboard with no protruding knobs, curved indoor handles, and padded front seat backs for the benefit of the rear seat occupants. Another major restyle arrived for the 25th anniversary 1939 models, which Dodge dubbed the Luxury Liner Series. These were once again completely redesigned, with new bodies for 1940, again in 1941, and a refreshing for 1942. However, just after the 1942 models were introduced, Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor forced the shutdown of Dodge's passenger car assembly lines in favor of war production in February 1942. 1941 saw the introduction of fluid drive for Dodge cars, which eliminated stalling or bucking if the clutch were released too quickly. This feature put a fluid coupling in between the engine and the clutch, although the driver still had to shift gears manually. Chrysler was prolific in its production of war materiel, especially from 1942 to 1945. Dodge in particular was well known to both average citizens and thankful soldiers for their tough military spec light trucks and WC-54 ambulances. Dodge America, on paper under the Fargo Trucks name, built over 400,000 trucks for the war, in its nearly new Warren truck plant at Mount Road, near Detroit, Michigan. Starting with the quickly converted VC and VF series of 1940, Dodge built mostly light 4x4, but also light medium 6x6 dub C series trucks, that evolved out of the VC series. Smaller numbers of other models were built for China and Russia under Lend Lease. Additionally, Chrysler Canada was enlisted to crank out another 180,000 Dodge trucks for the British and the Commonwealth militaries, over three quarters of which were three ton trucks to be used in the CMP role. Dodge readily built upon the reputation of the Dub C series for itself, by carrying it over into civilian models after the war, beginning with a successful power wagon, introduced with minimal modification almost immediately after the war, in 1945, for the 1946 model year. Civilian production at Dodge was restarted by late 1945, in time for the 1946 model year. The seller's market of the early post-war years, brought on by the lack of any new cars throughout the war, meant that every automaker found it easy to sell vehicles regardless of any drawbacks they might have. Like almost every other automaker, Dodge sold lightly facelifted revisions of its 1942 design through the 1948 season. As before, these were a single series of six-cylinder models with two trim levels. From 1949 until 1954, fluid drive could be combined with gyromatic, a semi-automatic transmission which reduced the need to shift gears. Styling was not initially Dodge's strong point during this period, though that began to change by 1953 under the direction of corporate design chief Virgil Exner. At the same time, Dodge also introduced its first V8 engine, the Red Ram Hemi a smaller version of the original design of the famed Hemi. The new 1953 bodies were smaller and based on the Plymouth. For 1954, sales dropped, the stubby styling not going over well with the public. 1954 also saw the introduction of the fully automatic power flight transmission. Chrysler borrowed $250 million from Prudential in 1954 to finance expansion, acquisition, and updating the outdated styling of their car lines that was contributed to Chrysler failing to benefit from the post-war boom as GM and Ford were. Exner led creation of the new corporate forward-look styling of 1955, beginning a new era for Dodge. With steadily upgraded styling and ever stronger engines every year through 1960, Dodge found a ready market for its products as America discovered the joys of freeway travel. This situation improved when Dodge introduced a new line of Dodges called the Dart to do battle against Ford. Chevrolet, and Plymouth. The result was that Dodge sales in the middle price class collapsed. Special and regional models were sold as well, including the La Femme and the Texan, a gold accented Dodge sold in the Lone Star State. 1957 saw the introduction of a new automatic transmission, three speed torque flight. Both power flight and torque flight were controlled by mechanical push buttons until 1965. Dodge entered the compact car field for 1961 with their new Lancer a variation on Plymouth's Valiant. Though it was not initially successful, the Dart range that succeeded the Lancer in 1963 would prove to be one of the division's top sellers for many years.
Plymouth's Chrysler did make an ill-advised move to downsize the Dodge and Plymouth full-size lines for 1962, which resulted in a loss of sales. However, they turned this around in 1965 by turning those former full-sizes into new mid-size models. Dodge revived the Coronet nameplate in this while and later added a sporty fastback version called the Charger that became both a sales leader and a winner on the NASCAR circuit. Not only did this style dominate the racetrack for four full years, its aerodynamic improvements forever changed the face of NASCAR racing. Full size models evolved gradually during this time. After Dodge dealers complained about not having a true full size car in the fall of 1961, the custom 880 was hurried into production. The custom 880 used the 1962 Chrysler Newport body with the 1961 Dodge front end and interior. The 880 continued into 1965, the year a completely new full size body was put into production. The Polar entered the medium price class and the Monaco was added as the top series. The Polar and Monaco were changed mostly in appearance for the next 10 years or so. Unique fuselage styling was employed for 1969 through 1973 and then was toned down again for the 1974 to 1977 models. Dodge targeted the muscle car market of the late 1960s and early 1970s. Along with the Charger, models like the Coronet RT and Super B were popular with buyers seeking performance. The pinnacle of this effort was the introduction of the Challenger Sports Coupe and Convertible in 1970 which offered everything from mild economy engines up to the race-ready Hemi V8 in the same package. In an effort to reach every segment of the market, Dodge even reached a hand across the Pacific to its partner, Mitsubishi Motors, and marketed their subcompact as the Colt to compete with the AMC Gremlin, Chevrolet Vega, and Ford Pinto. Chrysler would over the years come to rely heavily on their relationship with Mitsubishi. At the same time, Dodge got a version of the Plymouth Duster, marketed as the Dodge Demon. It was inexpensive, but with its slant six engine, the Demon could not achieve the fuel economy of the four cylinder Colt. The Demon sold in much fewer numbers than the Duster, so it is considered more a collectible today, especially the V8 version. The 1973 oil crisis caused significant changes at Dodge, as well as Chrysler as a whole. Except for the Colt and slant six models of the Dart, Dodge's lineup was quickly seen as extremely inefficient. In fairness, this was true of most American automakers at the time, but Chrysler was also not in the best financial shape to do anything about it. Consequently, while General Motors and Ford were quick to begin downsizing their largest cars, Chrysler moved more slowly out of necessity. At the very least, Chrysler was able to use some of its other resources. Borrowing the recently introduced Chrysler Horizon from their European division, Dodge was able to get its new Omni subcompact on the market fairly quickly. At the same time, they increased the number of models imported from Japanese partner Mitsubishi starting in 1971, first came a smaller Colt, then a revival of the Challenger in 1976 as a compact hardtop coupe with nothing more than a four-cylinder under the hood, rather than the booming V8S of yore. The Dart was replaced by a new Aspen for 1976, and Coronet and Charger were effectively replaced by the Diplomat for 1977 which was actually a fancier Aspen. While the Aspen got accolades for styling and handling, build quality was problematic, sullying the car's reputation at the time when sales were desperately needed. Meanwhile, the huge Monaco models hung around through 1977, losing sales every year, until finally being replaced by the St. Regis for 1979 following a one-year absence from the big car market. In a reversal of what happened for 1965, the St. Regis was an upsized coronet. Everything came to a head in 1979 when Chrysler's new chairman, Lee Iacocca, requested and received federal loan guarantees from the United States Congress in an effort to save the company from having to file bankruptcy. With a federal loan in hand, Chrysler quickly set to work on new models that would leave the past behind, while reorganizing to pay the government loan which stood at 29%. The first fruit of Chrysler's crash development program was the K-Car the Dodge version of which was the Dodge Aries. This basic and durable front-wheel drive platform spawned a whole range of new models at Dodge during the 1980s, including the groundbreaking Dodge Caravan. The Caravan not only helped save Chrysler as a serious high-volume American automaker, but also spawned an entirely new market segment that remains popular today, the minivan. Through the late 1980s and 1990s, Dodge's designation as the sporty car division was backed by a succession of high-performance and or aggressively styled models including the Daytona, mid-sized 600 and several versions of the Lancer. 
The Dodge Spirit sedan was well received in numerous markets worldwide. The Omni remained in the line through 1990. Dodge branded Mitsubishi vehicles were phased out by 1993 except for the Dodge Stealth running through 1996, though Mitsubishi made engines and electrical components were still widely used in American domestic Chrysler products. In 1992, Dodge moved their performance orientation forward substantially with the Viper, which featured an aluminum V10 engine and composite sports roadster body. This was the first step in what was marketed as the new Dodge, which was an aggressive advertising campaign with a litany of new models, with television ads narrated by Edward Herman that pointed out the innovations in the vehicles and challenged their competitors. Later that year, was the introduction of new Intrepid sedan, totally different from its boxy dynasty predecessor and, in 1994, the new second-generation Dodge Ram pickup was introduced with bold styling that departed radically from the boxy designs of trucks made by the big three for two decades prior. The Intrepid used what Chrysler called cab-forward styling, with the wheels pushed out to the corners of the chassis for maximum passenger space. They followed up on this idea in a smaller scale with the Neon and Stratus. The Neon featured a clever marketing campaign and good performance. In a move that never lived up to the expectations of its driving forces, Chrysler Corporation merged with Daimler-Benz AG in 1998 to form Daimler Chrysler. Rationalizing Chrysler's broad lineup was a priority, and Dodge's sister brand Plymouth was withdrawn from the market. With this move, Dodge became Daimler Chrysler's low price division as well as its performance division. The Intrepid, Stratus, and neon updates of the 1998 to 2000 timeframe were largely complete before Daimler's presence, and Dodge's first experience of any platform sharing with the German side of the company was the 2005 Magnum station wagon, introduced as a replacement for the Intrepid. Featuring Chrysler's first mainstream rear wheel drive platform since the 1980s and a revival of the Hemi V8 engine. The Charger was launched in 2006 on the same platform. Further cost savings were explored in the form of an extensive platform sharing arrangement with Mitsubishi, which spawned the Caliber Subcompact as air replacement for the Neon, and the Avenger sedan. The rear drive chassis was then used in early 2008 to build a new Challenger, with styling reminiscent of original 1970 Challenger. Like its predecessor, the new Challenger Coupe was available with a powerful V8 engine. In spring 2007, Daimler Chrysler reached an agreement with Cerberus Capital Management to sell its Chrysler Group subsidiary, of which the Dodge division was a part. Soon after, the housing bubble began to collapse the American market, and on May 1, 2009, Chrysler and GM filed for bankruptcy on the same day. On June 10, 2009, Italian automaker Fiat formed a partnership with Chrysler under Sergio Marchione, with a UAW, and the U.S. government to form Chrysler Group LLC of which Dodge remained fully integrated. For its part, the U.S. government provided more than $6 billion in loans at 21%, called the Bridge Loan or Bailout. The newly formed company went on to fully repay that loan, remortgaging to reduce the interest rate several times down to 6%. They fully paid back the loan with interest to the U.S. government on May 24, 2011, a full five years early. The UAW being partners throughout the process, were paid well and above $3.9 billion in 2013 as Sergio's plan for full consolidation has continued on schedule. This has allowed Chrysler LLC to fully merge with Fiat to form FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, in 2014. The combined company will be based in London. In 2013, Dodge reintroduced a compact car based on an Alfa Romeo design called the Dart. It was the first new Dodge model produced under FCA. On May 6, 2014, FCA announced a major restructuring, in which Dodge would focus solely on performance vehicles and will be positioned between Chrysler and a relaunched Alfa Romeo in the FCA lineup. This is a setup similar to PSA Peugeot Citroën, which positions Peugeot as its mainstream brand while Citroën is more performance-based, as well as Hyundai Motor Group having its two mainstream brands, Kia Motors and Hyundai Motor Company focusing on performance and mid-luxury, respectively. As part of the restructuring, Dodge will discontinue the Dodge Grand Caravan and Dodge Avenger without replacements, while launching a sporty subcompact below the Dart in 2018. Additionally, while the Ram Trucks division will remain separate, the SRT division was merged back into Dodge. Over the decades, Dodge has become well known for its passenger car output, along with its many truck models, but after almost a century of manufacturing these vehicles, a decision was made to spin off Dodge's trucks into a separate Ram brand, based on the popularity of their top-selling truck, the Dodge Ram. 
Although the Ram trucks are marketed separately from Dodge cars, Ram President Fred Diaz has said. Ram trucks will always and forever be Dodges. Ram will always have the Dodge emblem inside and outside and they will be no wiki VIN less than slash no wiki as a Dodge. We need to continue to market as Ram so Dodge can have a different brand identity, hip, cool, young, energetic. That will not fit the campaign for truck buyers. The two should have distinct themes. Ever since the beginning of its history in 1914, Dodge has offered light truck models. For the first few years, these were based largely on the existing passenger cars, but eventually gained their own chassis and body designs as the market matured. Light and medium-duty models were offered first, then a heavy-duty range was added during the 1930s and 1940s. The Warren Truck Assembly Plant in Michigan, just north of Detroit, was opened in 1938, and Dodge trucks have been made there ever since. Following World War II and the successful application of four-wheel drive to the truck line, Dodge introduced a civilian version that it called the Power Wagon. Dot at first based almost exactly on the military-type design, variants of the standard truck line were eventually given Ford WD in the same Power Wagon name. Dodge was among the first to introduce car-like features to its trucks, adding the plush adventurer package during the 1960s and offering sedan-like space in its club cab bodies of the 1970s. Declining sales and increased competition during the 1970s eventually forced the company to drop its medium and heavy-duty models, an arena the company has only recently begun to re-enter. Dodge introduced what they called the Adult Toys line to boost its truck sales in the late 1970s, starting off with the limited-edition Lil Red Express pickup. Later came the more widely available Warlock. Other adult toys from Dodge included the Macho Power Wagon and Street Van. As part of a general decline in the commercial vehicle field during the 1970s, Dodge eliminated their LCF series heavy-duty trucks in 1975, along with the Bighorn and medium-duty D-series trucks, and affiliated S-series school buses were dropped in 1978. On the other hand, Dodge produced several thousand pickups for the United States military under the CUPE program from the late 1970s into the early 1980s. Continuing financial problems meant that even Dodge's light-duty models, renamed as the Ram pickup line for 1981, were carried over with the most minimal off-updates until 1993. Two things helped to revitalize Dodge's fortunes during this time. One was the introduction of Cummins' powerful and reliable Beast Aries turbo diesel engine as an option for 1989. This innovation raised Dodge's profile among consumers who needed power for towing or large loads. The second was a class exclusive V8 engine option for the mid sized Dakota pickup. Dodge introduced the Ram's all new big rig styling treatment for 1994. Besides its instantly polarizing looks, exposure was also gained by usage of the new truck on the hit TV show Walker Texas Ranger starring Chuck Norris. The new Ram also featured a totally new interior with a console box big enough to hold a laptop computer, and ventilation and radio controls that were designed to be easily used even with gloves on. A V10 engine derived from that used in the Viper sports car was also new, and the previously offered Cummins turbo diesel remained available. The smaller Dakota was redesigned for 1997 using the big rig styling, thus giving Dodge trucks a definitive face that set them apart from the competition. The Ram was redesigned again for 2002, and the Dakota in 2005, and was basically an evolution of the original, but adding the Hemi V8 engine to the list of available options, due to the revival of the legendary Chrysler Hemi V8 engine. New medium-duty chassis cab models were introduced for 2007 with standard Cummins turbo diesel power as a way of gradually getting Dodge back into the business truck market again. For a time during the 1980s, Dodge imported a line of small pickups from Mitsubishi, known as the D50, or later the Ram 50 and were carried on as a stopgap until the Dakota's sales eventually made the imported trucks irrelevant. Reversing the role, Mitsubishi has more recently purchased Dakota pickups from Dodge and restyled them into their own Raider line for sale in North America. Dodge had offered panel delivery models for many years since its founding but their first purpose-built van model arrived for 1964 with the compact A-Series. Based on the Dodge Dart platform and using its proven six-cylinder V8 engines, the A-Series was a strong competitor for both its domestic rivals and the diminutive Volkswagen Transporter line. As the market evolved, Dodge realized that a bigger and stronger van line would be needed in the future, and thus the B-Series was introduced for 1971, 
and offered both car-like comfort in its sportsman passenger line or expansive room for gear and materials in its tradesman cargo line. A chassis cab version was also offered for use with bigger cargo boxes or flatbeds. Like the trucks, Chrysler's dire financial straits of the late 1970s precluded any major updates for the vans for many years. Rebadged as the Ram van and Ram wagon for 1981, this old design carried on for 33 years with little more than cosmetic and safety updates all the way to 2003. The Daimler Chrysler merger of 1999 made it possible for Dodge to explore new ideas, hence, the European styled Mercedes Benz Sprinter line of vans was brought over and given a Dodge styling treatment. Redesigned for 2006 as a 2007 model, the economical diesel-powered Sprinters have become very popular for city usage among delivery companies like FedEx and UPS in recent years. Because of their fuel efficiency major motorhome manufacturer Thor Motor Coach met several Class C and Class A motorhomes available on the Dodge Sprinter chassis including their popular four-wind Siesta and Chateau Citation product lines. Dodge also offered a cargo version of its best-selling caravan for many years, at first calling it the Mini Ram Van, which was a name originally applied to the short wheelbase B-Series Ram Vans, and later naming it the Caravan CV. The CV stood for Cargo Van. For model year 2011, the Caravan CV was rebranded as a Ram, and was renamed the Ram CV. Dodge's first experiments with anything like a sport utility vehicle appeared in the late 1950s with a windowed version of their standard panel truck, known as the Town Wagon. These were built in the same style through the mid-1960s, but the division did not enter the SUV arena in earnest until 1974, with the purpose-built Ram Charger. Offering the then-popular open-body style and Dodge powerful V8 engines, the Ram Charger was a strong competitor for trucks like the Ford Bronco. Chevrolet Blazer and International Harvester Scout 2. Once again, though, Dodge was left with outdated products during the 1980s as the market evolved. The Ram Charger hung on through 1993 with only minor updates. When the Ram truck was redesigned for the 1994 model year, the Ram Charger was discontinued in the American and Canadian markets. A version using the updated styling was made for the Mexican market but was never imported to the US or Canada. Instead, Dodge tried something new in 1997. Using the mid-sized Dakota pickups chassis as a base, they built the four-door Durango SUV with seating for eight people and created a new niche. Size between smaller SUVs and larger models, Durango was both a bit more and bit less of everything. The redesigned version for 2004 grew a little bit in every dimension, becoming a full-size SUV, but was still sized between most of its competitors on either side of the aisle. For 2011, a new unibody Durango based on the Jeep Grand Cherokee was released. The 2011 Durango shrank slightly to size comparable to the original model. Dodge also imported a version of Mitsubishi's popular Montero as the Raider from 1987 to 1989. From the late 20th century onwards, Dodge's highest performing vehicles fell under the category SRT. These models often came equipped with high-performance F8S under the hood. These models included the Dodge Challenger SRT, Dodge Charger SRT, Dodge Magnum SRT and Dodge Durango SRT. They also produced the Dodge Neon SRT4, Dodge Caliber SRT4, Dodge Viper and Dodge Ram SRT10. In 2015, FCA introduced the Hellcat, a 707 horsepower, supercharged 6.2 liters Hemi V8. In 2017, Dodge released the Dodge Challenger Demon. It is powered by an 840 horsepower supercharged 6.2 liters Hemi V8, and comes from the factory with a toolbox known as the Demon Toolbox that has everything a buyer will need to drag race, including the skinny front drag tires. However, buyers will only get 840 horsepower on race fuel. On regular pump gas, it produces 808 horsepower, a 101 horsepower increase over the Hellcat. Dodge came to Argentina in the early 20th century with imported cars and trucks. In 1960, it partnered with Fever Bassett as a local manufacturer. The first vehicle made in Argentina was the D100 swept line pickup. Between 1961 and 1980, a variety of trucks were produced, including the D400 DP400, D500 DP500, DP600, DD900, and DD1000. Passenger cars were also produced namely the Valiant 1 and 2, and the local versions of the 1966 Dodge Dart. In 1971, the Dodge 1500, a rebadged Hillman Avenger from the United Kingdom was introduced. In 1982, 
Production of Dodge vehicles ceased when German company Volkswagen bought the fever plant and the shares. In Argentina, the name Polara was used to refer to a series of vehicles developed on the basis of the fourth-generation North American Dodge Dart. These cars were manufactured between 1968 and 1980, by the subsidiary Chrysler Fever Argentina SA. In 1993, Dodge began marketing cars and pickups directly in Argentina. Currently, both the Journey and the Ram are available to Argentine customers. Dodge entered the Japanese market in mid-2007 and re-entered the Chinese market in late 2007. Suist Motors of China assembles the caravan for the Chinese market. Dodge began marketing its vehicles in South Korea in 2004, starting with the Dakota. Dodge re-entered the Australian market in 2006 with the Caliber, their first offering since the 84-D5N trucks in 1979 and the first Dodge passenger car to be marketed in Australia since the Phoenix sedan was discontinued in 1973. The second model to be introduced was the Nitro, with the Avenger and Journey followed. Dodge chose not use the full model lines and engines available to them, the 2.7 liters V6 being available in the Journey and Avenger instead of the 3.2 in the North American versions. However, they did introduce diesel engines in all their cars. Following the global financial crisis, Chrysler introduced the facelifted model of the Caliber and discontinued the Avenger imports. From early 2012 on, model year 2010 cars were available. By early 2012 no new cars were being brought into Australia aside from the new facelifted 2012 journey. There are now rumours that Dodge cars will be rebadged as Fiat's in the Australian market as has happened in Europe. In contrast, recent speculation has suggested that the Dodge nameplate would continue on until at least 2015, due to consistent sales of the journey. In Brazil, Dodge cars were produced between 1969 and 1981 with the models Dart, Charger, Magnum, LeBaron and the compact 1800 Polara, based on the British Hillman Avenger. The manufacturer was acquired by Volkswagen in 1981. In 1998, the Dakota pickup started production in a new plant in Campo Largo, Paraná by Mercedes-Benz, which belongs to its former partner Daimler AG. It was built there until 2001 with petrol and diesel engines and regular, extended and crew cabs. In 2010, Dodge started sales of the imported pickup Ram 2500. The model portfolio is being expanded, starting with the Journey crossover for the 2009 model year. In Canada, the Dodge lineup of cars started down the road to elimination along with the Plymouth line when in 1988 the Dodge Dynasty was sold in Canada as the Chrysler Dynasty and sold at both Plymouth and Dodge dealers. Similarly, the new Dodge Intrepid, the Dynasty's replacement, was sold as the Chrysler Intrepid. For 2000, the new Neon became the Chrysler Neon. The Chrysler Cirrus and Mitsubishi built Dodge Avenger were dropped. Dodge trucks, which had been sold at Canadian Plymouth dealers since 1973, continued without change. All Plymouth Chrysler and Dodge Chrysler dealers became Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealers. The diluting of the Chrysler name did not go well in Canada, especially as the nameplate had been pushed as a luxury line since the 1930s. For 2003, the revamped Neon appeared in Canada as the Dodge SX 2.0. Since then, all new Dodge models have been sold in Canada under the Dodge name. Dodge started assembling lorries in the United Kingdom, from imported parts, in 1922. In 1933 it began to manufacture a British chassis, at its works in Kew, using American engines and gearboxes. Following Chrysler's takeover of the British Roots Group, Simca of France, and Barreros of Spain, and the resultant establishment of Chrysler Europe in the late 1960s, the Dodge brand was used on light commercial vehicles, most of which were previously branded Commer or Carrier, on pickup and van versions off the Simca 1100, on the Spanish Dodge Dart, and on heavy trucks built in Spain. The most common of these was the Dodge 50 series, widely used by utility companies and the military, but rarely seen outside the UK, and the Spanish built heavy duty 300 series available as 4x2. 6x4, 8x2, and 8x4 rigids, as well as 4x2 semi-trailer tractors. All of these were also sold in selected export markets batched either as Fargo or DeSoto. Following Chrysler Europe's collapse in 1977, and the sale of their assets to Peugeot, the Chrysler slash Dodge British and Spanish factories were quickly passed into Renault Vehicle Industrielle. Chrysler licensed the Dodge name to be used on Renault trucks sold in certain European markets, most notably the United Kingdom, 
although it eventually reverted to Renault when the associated models were discontinued. They would eventually drop these products altogether on used the plants to produce engines and real Renault truck models in Spain. Dodge vehicles would not return to the UK until the introduction of the Neon, badged as a Chrysler, in the mid-1990s. The Dodge mark was reintroduced to Europe on a broad scale in 2006, with a lineup consisting of the Caliber, Avenger, Viper SRT10, Nitro and Dodge Journey. However, in 2010 Chrysler pulled the Dodge mark from the UK lineup due to poor sales. On June 1, 2011 the Dodge name was dropped from the rest of Europe when it was replaced by the Fiat brand, where Fiat rebadged the Dodge Journey as the Fiat Fremont. However, the Fremont is not available in the Ireland or UK Fiat lineup. In Mexico, the Hyundai Accent, Hyundai Autos, and Hyundai H100 were branded as Dodge, Dodge Attitude, Verna by Dodge, Autos by Dodge and Dodge 100 respectively, and sold at Chrysler slash Dodge dealers. Current models are marketed with Hyundai logos instead of the Ram logo on previous model year since 2014. Dodge and Hyundai ended the venture and Dodge will use rebadged and reworked Fiat's. Also, to the next year with Mitsubishi Mirage is sold as the new Dodge Attitude since 2015. A second emblem was revealed during the unveiling of the 2011 Durango, which used the same five-point shield-shaped outline of the old emblem, but with a ram's head replaced with a chrome cross reminiscent of the brand's signature crosshair grille. This was only used on the steering wheel. In 2014, the cross logo was replaced by the word Dodge on the Durango steering wheel. A modified version of the Ram's head logo is still used for the Ram brand, with Ram written across the bottom in bold white or black lettering. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.